Father and the Lord. Celebrate it. Hallelujah. Do it better for Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Yes. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. Father, we reference you. We thank you, El Shaddai. We thank you, Adonai. Thank you for a new month. Tell somebody, you are welcome to a new month. Welcome to a new month. Hallelujah. Amen. You are Yahweh, Alpha. Omega. Oh, the voices, there's the voices. You are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, the Alpha, and Omega. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha. And Omega, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega, you are Yahweh, 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 Alpha, and Omega. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you because our lives will not remain the same tonight. Thank you for what you have said to do in our lives. May your name alone be exalted. In Jesus' name we worship. Let's have our feet in God's presence. Hallelujah. Tell somebody happy new month. Tell another person it is nice in this new month. Hallelujah. The last time I saw most of us was last month. Hallelujah. And then we thank God for giving us the privilege to see another month. And we'll continue to see new months in the name of Jesus. I'm going to continue our series that we, we started last week and uh, last month. I'm going to continue on that series. The evidence of Christianity. Hallelujah. The evidence of Christianity. But tonight, we're going to be looking at the evidence of Christianity part two. Part 2A, the evidence of Christianity, part 2A. And we're going to be looking at the manifestation of his power. I told us that a light shines through power manifestation. A light also shines through finance. And a light will shine also through your lifestyle. But tonight I'm going to be looking at evidence of Christianity. And then we'll be considering our focus will be on the power manifestation. The power manifestation. Let's look at the book of First Corinthians 4 from verse 20. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 4 from verse 20. Are we there yet? First Corinthians 4 from verse 20. And the Bible says, For the kingdom of God is not, is not in world, but in power. The kingdom of God is not just in world, but in power. That means one of the evidence of a Christian. Is not just having word, not just speaking the word, but also possessing power. Not just being a proclaimer, not just be someone that speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks. The letter speaking, the, the evidence, be accompanied, be followed with a backup. And that backup is called power. That is why a, a policeman alone cannot go and attack or arrest an armed robber, a troop of armed robbers. He said, I need backup. He goes with backup. He alone is, is like a minimal or it's like something that cannot make much impact. But with backup, he sees that he can make a massive impact. So, power is what gives us back up as Christians. Hallelujah. 
power as a child of God is what gives us back up as Christians. Any Christian without this power is a Christian that lacks backup. Hallelujah. Any child of God without this power is a child of God that lacks backup. But that shall not be your portion in the name of Jesus. You believe that shall be loudest. Amen. A child of God needs a pack up of power. Now the question is, what is power? What is power? Power is the undeniable presence of God that produces physical and spiritual results. Power is the undeniable, undeniable presence of God that produces both physical and spiritual results. A man, a Christian, can never see results without power. Hallelujah. A Christian life that is powerless is a Christian life that is resultless. For you to see result in this journey of Christendom, you should cry for his power. For you to see results in this journey of serving God, you should be a carrier of his power. Hallelujah. Physical result and spiritual results. Physical result is you are seeing somebody literally tormented and molested in pains. You no house on that person and that person is delivered. You have seen physical results. You see somebody under the attack of the devil, oppressed and mesmerized by the evil spirit. And then you lay hands on that person and that devil checks out. You see physical power. Then you see spiritual power when you begin to contend with altars. In which altars that say you cannot exist. Try you but yet. Their trying is in vain. They try you but yet. Their battle, their fighting is in vain. That is where you see spiritual results. Hallelujah. A Christianity walk, a Christianity journey, our journey with God with us power makes us to, to be victims to the devil. The devil will just come and kill somebody physically. But you didn't know that that person has died. You see that that person is dead physically. But you didn't know that that person has died spiritually. And then it is just manifesting physically. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there is a need for you as a child of God to possess the power. To possess the power. To possess the power. But somebody here, you will see the result in your work with God. You will see massive results this year in your work with God. You believe the Lord is Amen. The person standing before you would have been long gone if only there is no power. The place you are seeing here would have been long dead. This ministry would have been long dead if not because of the power back in it. Somebody, your life will be backed by power from today. You believe that shall be loudest. Everything that looks like dryness and powerlessness and resultlessness in your life. From tonight, that thing is catching fire. In the name of Jesus. There's nothing that frustrates a man like lack of evidence. Lack of evidence. You somebody, my Bible said, my Bible said, but there's no evidence. That thing that the Bible is saying cannot be your life. That thing that the Bible is saying cannot manifest in your life. There's nothing that frustrates somebody. There's nothing that frustrates a man. There's nothing that frustrates a Christian. Like a journey. Serving God and yet nothing to show. Serving God and yet no evidence to show, no proof to show. Hallelujah. But from tonight, that siege is catching fire. Yeah. 
In this month of May, that seed is catching fire. Amen. 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 What are the benefits of possessing the power of God? What are the benefits of possessing the power? I mean, if you possess the power, it's not for you alone. People around you will feel it. Your families will feel it. Even the devil will feel it. So the, the, the power is tangible and palpable and visible. With a wizard around, they will feel it. That this one is a no go because there's an evidence of power. But when there's no power, nobody will feel anything. One thing is that the presence is feelable. The presence of God is tangible. The presence of God is palpable. You can feel it. You can feel it. Hallelujah. What are the benefits of possessing the power of God? Number one, it guarantees preservation. It guarantees preservation. When you possess the presence, you are preserved. A man that carries power cannot be wasted like a chicken. Mm. Cannot be wasted like a chicken. A man that possesses the power of God cannot just die like a chicken. What is wasting others cannot just waste you. In this month of May, you can you will not be wasted. You shall not be wasted. And you will never be wasted. Let me power is what keeps you. Power is what preserves you. Hallelujah. A man that carries power is a man that is not a victim to anything. Because that power serves as a shield. It's just like somebody having a protective shield. Helmet all over his head. Even if that person falls with the head, it will not, the nothing will happen to him because his head is covered with helmet. That is how power is. It serves as a shield. They will throw anything against you, but it will not enter. Why? Because you are shielded. But a man that is powerless, a Christian that is powerless, is exposed to anything. Sickness will come and hit him. Arrows will come and hit him. Multiple arrows will come and hit her. Why? Because there's absence, bankruptcy of power. But when you possess power, you see that there's, there's a strong protective shield. Somebody here, uh, in this month, I declare in the name of Jesus that the shield upon your life will be strengthened even the more. That means you are going to see more power in your life this month. Amen. You believe that shall the Lord amen. amen. What are the benefits of this power? Number two, it arrests the spirit of stagnation. Power arrest stagnation. The difference is clear. The difference between a man that carries power and a man that does not carry power is clear. A man that is powerless will be stagnated in one place because there's a force that is keeping him. But a man that carries power cannot be stagnated. A man, a woman that carries power can never be limited. That is why don't limit a man that carries oil. Never you limit a man that carries power of God. Never you limit a woman that carries power of God. Because power breaks stagnation. They will say you, 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 you continue to remain like this. So, but then that power will check you. From that place to where God wants you to be. That power will cut and shoot you. From that spot where people used to know you to be. To the place where God wants you to be. Power. Power. Power makes you to move. To be on perpetual motion. To be on perpetual motion. 
acceleration to add velocity in life. I think I've seen people that one year will pass, they are still in one place. Two years, five years, ten years, and then you they put you grew up together with and you look at them. They are not in Christ. They are not born again. You look at them and you look at your life. And you see, you see that the difference is so clear. The difference is power. Who is fighting them can no longer fight you. Why? Because you possess power. When a man is not in Christ, that man can never access power. The Bible says to them that believe it. He gave the power to become the sons of God. Power is not only meant for pastors. Power is not only meant for evangelists. Power is not only meant for prophets. Once you become a believer, you are automatically licensed to carry power. Hallelujah. So don't say, I'm not a pastor. I don't want to lie. You will come and bless you. You will, you, will reach the, you will reach a point in which you are supposed to begin to enjoy in your life. That is when you will just be, be wasted. But that shall not be your portion. That is why we need the power. So that somebody will, somebody that has been fought in his hand has not been doing anything when you are suffering. It is when you want to enjoy that that person will rise. And that person is rising, that thing is backfiring back to that person. Why? Because power is at work. Hallelujah. Somebody there, the power of God will be seen manifest in your life. In the name of Jesus. You believe that shout the loudest. Amen. You believe that shout the loudest. Amen. You believe that shout the loudest. Amen. And I prophesy upon somebody here. Every stagnation in your life. Every stagnation in your destiny. From today, mark the hand in the name of Jesus. In this month of May, anything, hear me? This is our day of speed. That means you are not permitted to be in the same spot you were last month. I'm not talking about last year. The same spot you were last month. You are not permitted to be in that same spot this month. That is what speed means. Speed is speed means consistently becoming better consistently becoming better consistently be on the moving side somebody this month god will give you that consistent motion in the name of jesus but where you were last month will not be where you will be this month in the name of jesus what are the benefits of possessing the power Number three, it arrests the spirit of rejection. It arrests the spirit of rejection. A man that carries power can never be rejected. If I carry what you need, you will always come to me. If I carry what will help you, you will always come to me. So a man that carries power can never be rejected. A man that carries power is a man that enjoys acceptance, enjoys celebration, enjoys favor. Hallelujah. So you cannot carry power and experience rejection. That means that is no power. If you carry his power, you will definitely see acceptance. And I declare upon anybody here, suffering that spirit of rejection. So tonight that spirit is coming to an end. In the name of Jesus. Anything that looks like rejection, that means what belongs to you is just is diverted because somebody does not like you. Or because there's a manipulation somewhere. But today, that you will come to an end. In the name of Jesus. We believe that shall the Lord most. Amen. The believer shout the loudest. Amen. What are the keys to accessing the power of God? What are the keys to accessing the power of God? Go to share with us three things briefly. 
Let me go into the session of prayer. We're going to cry to God, Lord, give me power. I want to possess this power. Yeah, me this is a serious business. Because I thought you may call pastor in the night and pastor phone is switched off. Or pastor is praying. And then somebody, somebody perhaps is dying in the house. Or particular a small child is dying in the house. That night you are calling pastor. And then pastor's phone perhaps is switched off. Or pastor is not reachable or is not answering the calls. The question is, what will you do? That is why you need power. What you do is that you will do what Jesus is supposed to do in that place. You lay hands and cast out that demon. But if you lack power, you will just start crying. If you lack power, you will not even know what to do. At that point, you will just be confused. But if you, mind, if you carry power at that point, you will know what to do. You will do what Jesus has ordered us to do. This is to cast the devil and put those demons where they belong. Hallelujah. So what are the keys? That's in power. Number one is called the key of prayer and fasting. The key of prayer and fasting. You hear me? You can never see power without prayer. You can never see power without fasting. You can, it's not done anywhere. But you see power when you create a schedule. I create schedules that I must seek the face of God. I create schedules that I must wait upon God. So you create, you see power when you create a schedule. When you create a schedule that you must definitely seek the face of God. At any point you find yourself. If it was a week, if it twice a week, Lord, this day, this day belongs to you. I will stay with you. I will wait upon you. Hallelujah. Lord, this day, this day, this particular day, I will seek your face. I must stay in your presence. Hallelujah. When a man does that for a week, two weeks, three weeks, going to a month, that man's life must put something must something must shake. I will sit down like this. I will literally feel something flowing on my head. That is oil flowing on my head. When I feel it, I always enjoy it. I say, Lord, I can never experience dryness. Because I stay in your presence. A man that stay in the presence of God, dryness is far away from that man. A woman that stays in the presence can never see dryness. It's just rainy season, rainy season, wet season, the refreshing season. That is what the prayer stores for you. Prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Never in your life outgrow praying. Never in your life outgrow fasting. Because it is like somebody has calling death, death, come and take me. Enemies, I am open to you now. Come and deal with me. If you are still praying and you are still fasting, you are keeping your life to the devil. But that shall not be your portion in the name of Jesus. What are the keys to assessing the power? Number two is the key of sacrifice. Be ready to sacrifice for God. Sacrifice may not be money. So you sacrifice your time, you sacrifice your life, you live for God, you live for Jehovah. It may not be, it, 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 it's some sacrifice, it's something that you give at your point of inconvenience. Sacrifice is something you leave, you let go, even when it is not, you are not up to letting it go. Hallelujah. Sacrifice is something you let go. And at that point, you are really feeling the pain. You are really feeling the impact of that thing that you are letting go. Sacrifice. Sometimes God will say, leave this boy, leave this girl. She will kill your destiny. It will kill your destiny. You are sacrificing, you are sacrificing at that point. Let go this your bad friend, this your bad friend. If not, they cannot possess power. 
you are sacrificing at that point. Lord can say, this money that has entered your hand, it is coming back to him. You are sacrificing at that point. Wherever they sacrifice on the altar, fire is ignited on that altar. Sacrifice brings about the igniting, ignition of fire upon the altar. And the fire, when it's ignited upon the altar, power is being assessed. So you can never see power when you are not living a sacrificial life. You cannot enter rain because of God. You cannot enter the sun. You cannot inconvenience yourself to serve because of God. You never see power. Hallelujah. What are they? The keys to assessing power. Number three. It's called the life of purity. You can never assess power when you live in sin. You can never assess power when you dwell in impurity. Power for those men that live in purity. Hallelujah. Especially in this entire beloved, refuse to live a life of compromise. Can you hear me? Refuse to live a life of compromise. Anything that will compromise you serving God, compromise you affecting the power of God, ensure you don't live a life without it. Hallelujah. Anything that will make you not to stand firm with God and show you you dissuade from that thing. Anything that will take you far away from God and show you disconnect from that thing. Hallelujah. A man that is living in sin cannot pray. A man that is living in sin cannot fast. And when a man cannot pray and that man cannot, that man becomes vulnerable to the devil. Because the day you begin to sin is the day you stop praying. And the day you stop sinning, that is the day you start praying. So you can never, 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 never assess this power when you are living in sin. I pray for somebody right now that God will show us mercy and give us grace to live above sin in the name of Jesus. I declare upon the life of somebody seated here that everything that is serving as a yoke of sin in your life from today, my God and your God will handle it in the name of Jesus. But ensure you also make effort you let go anything that will push you into sin. It's a particular point that is domestic around with you. And show you let go. I'm not speaking to us alone. As I'm speaking, this thing is going into the into the into the media world, into the online community. And I'm speaking to everybody. And as I'm speaking, I'm also speaking to myself. Hallelujah. If there's a God that is leading you into messing up and 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 making you to drain and to lose the presence of God. Let's go that boy. And let's go that girl. Hallelujah. I sound like this because I'm talking to everybody. Not only people seated here. Because some of our messages are online. You see about 200 people view. 200 people being touched. They are not here presently. But they are being touched in the online community. So that's why we have to preach our whole act. We have to preach the whole truth. Because this is the season for impact. This is the season for impact. Hallelujah. And God will give us power to make impact. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, in this month of May, one thing that God told me in this month is that in this month of May, I'm going to make a way. I'm going to make a way in this month of May. Upon your life, upon your destiny, upon your family, Jehovah will make a way. You need to shout the loudest, Amen. You need to shout the loudest, Amen. I prophesy upon the life of somebody that in this month of May, 
you shall not be wasted. By the vision of the power of God, you shall not be wasted. By the vision of the power of God, the Jehovah will make a way from you. And above all, by the vision of the power of God, you will not lose, you will not be lost from the trap. There's nothing as dangerous as after God. After falling in the prayer, all of a sudden you go and just little minutes of resting, of messing up. And then you lose what God has imparted upon you several years. What took eight years for me to get? I go and lose it in the altar of immorality. Of immorality of just 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And I lost it. Nothing as bad as that. You cannot pray for, for you cannot pray for like three days. I don't know why I'm hammering on this, but God is answering somebody tonight. God is answering something tonight. God will answer something tonight. Something that will that will shift us the work will go to another way. Hear me. If you are powerless, you are a victim to the devil. If you are powerless, the witches and wizards can handle and mesmerize your life. The person standing before you now would have been long gone as a forgotten. If not because of the backing of the power. Long forgotten. Long wasted. If not because of the backing of the power. Somebody from tonight, that same power will pass your life. That same power will pass your destiny. You believe and shout the loudest. Amen. You believe and shout power. You believe and shout fire. Yes, sir. But, but hear me. One major thing we are going to cry tonight. Hear me. It's Lord. Baptize me with fresh power. Lord. Baptize me.